All right, I am thrilled today to be interviewing Joan Marie. So welcome, Joan Marie. It's fantastic to have you here. And let's get straight into it. Tell us who who are you and what you do. <laughs> oh yay, Helen! <laughs> <laughs> I just have to say, I, I feel like calling you Miss Vitality, or no, I just Miss say, Vitality. I love it. Or, or hello, Tigger, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Tigger. So shall I shall I give the little backstory about yeah. the Tigger? Oh, yes. Thank Please. you for for listeners and viewers. By the way, so you may be listening to this on the Sasaga podcast. You may be watching this on. Um, uh, somewhere on social media, on YouTube, maybe. So the Tigger story is that we we actually met as um, as accountability partners in an international mastermind, and we both have this like great you know energy <laughs> when we first met, um, and we started talking about Tigger, like our favorite character in Winnie the Pooh, and um, so we we both call each other Tigger. Um, so that's why you might hear references to tiggerness and vitality. <laughs> All right. So tell us more, apart from being a tigger, my, my tigger <laughs> accountability partner, uh, who, who are you, Joan, and what do you do? All right. My name is Joan Marie. I'm a visionary artist, and I create art that inspires people to remember who they are. So things that you love, things that bring out your passions. So that's my goal. All right, and you can see, for those of you watching the video, you can see right behind me um, the beautiful, beautiful artwork that, that uh, Joan did for me. And we can talk more about that a little bit later on as well. And if you're, not, if you're just listening to the podcast, you'll be able to see on social media, we'll put some videos and some photos up as well so that you can see this, because it is amazing. I'm so, just so thrilled to receive that. All right, so word of the year, Joan. What is your word of the year? If I had to pick one, it's focus. Mm. And, uh, That's kind of funny, isn't it? If I had to pick one, it's focus. Because you know, <laughs> oh <my> God, <laughs> my focus on one word. So, and of course, I have to break focus into many layers. You know, we can't uh -huh. just say one word. So, so imagine focusing. Focus in the moment to, mm -hmm. to be present in the moment. Mm -hmm. And when you're present in the moment, you're not thinking about the past or the future. Mm -hmm. And that means that you are engaged in what you're doing, which uh -huh. also means your feelings are connected. You know, it's kind of multiple. You know what I mean? It's like if you're focused and you're able to stay focused, it means that you have a feeling, passionate connection to uh -huh. earth. You developed it, you know, like if you're doing something you don't necessarily love, but you've developed the skill to say, mm -hmm. okay, I don't necessarily love this task, but I have shifted my attention to loving it in some way so where I can stay focused to get it done. And when mm -hmm. you're focused, you just are in a better place. Mm -hmm. and, and, but focused with good feelings. Focused so, with good feelings. Uh -huh. Yeah. So be aware of your feelings while you're being focused because it's for me it's all about feelings 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 right right and a lot of the time people are thinking about the past and things that didn't go well or worrying about the future and so there may be feelings attached to it but they're not good feelings and the other thing is pushing you know when when you're not focused it's because you're thinking of what i didn't do or what i should do and and you're mm -hmm. you're anxious and you're so you're somewhere else mm -hmm. and, and you're and being somewhere else means you're not happy with where you are and right. if you're not happy with where you are you can't get much done <laughs> you know like because your right. mind's jumping around about either you know what i should be doing or what i could have done or what i did you know and your mind's jumping around so it's like you're you're just spinning your wheels and you're getting nothing accomplished right so what made you choose this word for this year oh boy um, <laughs> because of business you know the uh, the business of art like i am totally able to focus when i do my art i i yeah, I work in silence and, and I just I just become one with my art and I can just spend literally nine hours straight. I mean, <laughs> you know, stop to eat. Oops, I forgot. You know, like mm -hmm. I just I love drawing and painting and creating my art. I just get totally in the zone, totally focused. Mm -hmm. But you know, the business of art is mm -hmm. a whole other story. Mm -hmm. So 
while I'm trying to do the business tasks, mm. I have found that <clears throat> I'm wishing I were drawing <laughs> <laughs> or thinking I'm not good at this or, you know, I wish someone else were doing it. I wish I didn't have to, you know, my mind is, is jumping all these places. Of it. And then I'm like, half an hour goes by. And I still haven't gotten this one business task done. See how lousy I am? I business. Mm -hmm. And then I beat myself up. And, you know, it just gets bigger and bigger and worse and worse. So I was like, well, just, if you can just get in the zone, mm -hmm. just like you do with your art, you yeah. know, and I know I have to create an image like, that I love business. And you know, like if you really hate a certain task, mm -hmm. you either should get somebody else to do it, or if you just really cannot do that, you must change your attitude towards it. Oh, I love that, yeah, yeah. Or don't do that task. Maybe there's a different task that you should be doing that you could replace it with. I'm right. sure I found a few tasks and I'm like, well, everybody does this in business, but I'm like, wait a minute, do I, re do I really have to with, my unique me, the way I run my business for me, uniquely me. I'm mm -hmm. not following somebody else's rules, how they made a million. I'm following, I, I, I learned, you have to follow your own rules. You have to create your own rules for you. Right. You know? So get creative. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I, and I, I love this because you can apply it to the corporate world as well. Many of the, the listeners and viewers are working in a corporate environment. So they may feel like, oh, well, I don't have that flexibility. I can't so much pick and choose what tasks I do. But as you say, if it's something that you really do need to do, change your attitude about it. Look for what you do enjoy in that and, and, and go from there. But at the same time, I think as well, what you bring up is really important because there's that potential to actually question, do I really need to be doing this and talk to, you know, talk to your boss about it because maybe there's a more efficient, um, maybe it doesn't even need to be done or maybe there's a more efficient way to do it. Maybe there's a, someone else who can do it better. I think that, that's or, kind of questioning. Or, or a more creative way to do a it. Creative way of doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. I love that. I love that. So, <laughs> I think those are the signs, you know, when you're really frustrated about something, rather than just stay frustrated about it, say, wait a minute, I'm getting a message, you know, yeah. figure this out. There's a solution yeah. to every single problem. So this is telling me I need to, you know, all the, I choose a different attitude or get creative or, you know, choose a different, anyway, this is time to stop and think about it, think it through, find a new right. way. Right. And I love how we've got the grandfather clock yes. <laughs> chiming in the background, telling us this is a really important message. <laughs> if you're, if you're, if something is a struggle for you, if you're not happy with it, well, think about it in a different way and start to then feel about it in a different way. Yeah. I love that. So confidence is a topic that many of the Sasuke podcast listeners are interested in um something that people want to to build can you tell us about some of your experiences with confidence and building confidence Ooh. in your life <laughs> <laughs> so for, for those of you who can't see Joan is actually fanning herself now because this is a hot topic <laughs> oh my gosh I mean Lack of self-esteem and lack of confidence has been my burden and, mm -hmm. you know, to, to overcome it. And people will look at me and look at my art and go, how can you not be confident? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, as years went by and my art did get, I'll say, incredibly good. And, you know, because I worked It's really incredibly hard. good. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll say it. I'll finally just say it, you know. Um, but I still, oh, there's the other grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the um even when my skill got better and better and master level you know i i still had that bad habit mm -hmm. of being insecure mm -hmm. and you know so i had to analyze all these levels and i was like oh my gosh so so i don't know where do i start um can i should i start can i start with a michelangelo story <laughs> tell us your michelangelo story <laughs> yeah. So I'm 19. I didn't know what I was going to do in my life. My my, years old, know, right? my, art, my artistic talent was above average, but not like top, you know, I, so I didn't know. Anyway, I went to see Michelangelo, the Sistine ceiling. Michelangelo's Sistine ceiling is 
spiritual. And I saw that and it was like, I had an out of body experience. I, I just swooned and I just drank it in and I, I couldn't see anything. I was just feeling, I, I mean, I saw, I, I just became one with the ceiling. It, it's so hard to describe. It was such a powerful, powerful message. And I said to myself, if art is that powerful, I must be a part of it. I must, I must create art that adds positive energy to the world. Mm -hmm. So here I am 19. I said, yes, I now know my purpose. So I was all excited and high energy, went to college, went to the right, you know, very upper level art college. And as a sophomore, you know, I was working really, really hard to get good. And, and a teacher said, Joan, you really shouldn't be an artist. He's like a really powerful art teacher, an artist, powerful artist. And he said, you really shouldn't be an artist. There's 50,000 starving artists in New York City alone, and you don't want to be one of them. He said, you are not creative, and you really should find another profession. You should be a home economics major. <laughs> that was back in the day. We're talking about, the, you know, oh my gosh. So I left the room, you know, got tears in my eyes, came back out, and I said, is creativity something that you can learn, or do you just have to be born with it? And he said, you just have to be born with it, and I'm sorry. <laughs> In other words, sorry, you didn't know you weren't born. So I just, you know, you know, I, was, you know, you have no idea how bad. I didn't say this to him. I said it to myself. You have no idea how badly I want to be an artist. So then my whole purpose. I mean, you know, these negative moments do serve a purpose. It gave me more adrenaline to work harder at my mm -hmm. skills. And I got better and better and better and better and better until I got into graduate school because of my skill level was so high. Mm -hmm. And you know, I proved that I could you know, be good, like I could improve my skills. The creativity was still, like I was still blocked. Mm -hmm. And it was because I kept hearing him insulting me. So when you hear, you know, and you know, we don't embody these things unless we believe it ourselves. Like right. if somebody says, oh, you know, something about you is whatever, you don't take it in unless you already kind of agree with them. Because yeah. if, if otherwise you just go, well, I don't know what your problem is, but I'm fine, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, sorry, you're having a bad day saying that weird thing to me, you know? Yeah. But I really took it in because I didn't think I was good enough. And so I kept hearing his voice. So. I was told once, I, I, so I became very hyper, driven to work hard, work hard, work hard, work hard, work at my skill, work at, you know, and, and my skill got good, but my creativity was still blocked. And, and I found, listen to this, they said being hyper, which means a lot of us pushing too hard, yeah. trying to get somewhere, pushing mm -hmm. too hard, pushing too hard, working too much. Mm -hmm. You are not happy with who you are. Mm. I'm happy with who you are because you're anxious to be someone else or somewhere else or at some other level or mm -hmm. be, you know, so I wasn't happy with my skill level. So I was pushing and, and you never get there with that attitude, with that energy, with that hyper energy. You can't get there from here. You know, you have to love yourself for who you are right now. Mm -hmm. And I just went, oh my gosh. I have to love myself now. I'm not that creative. Like, how can I love myself? I see my skill has gotten really good, but, but there's still things I'm not good enough at. How can I love myself? Mm -hmm. And, you know, but I had to do it. Mm -hmm. I really, when I found out that's the law, that's life's law. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to understand that. And so I drew about being peaceful and quit, stop being so hyper and, you know, slow down, slow down. And then you have to work at breaking the habit, you know, of being hyper and, and, and that habit of putting yourself down. So in general, that's, that, that was the big lessons, that, some of the big lessons that I learned. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I, I love that. I mean, it's something that personally resonates for people who've been listening to me or, or you know, following me. You know that I, I have a, a history of being a, a, a huge overachiever and a, the pressured people pleaser. And this is something that I've been working on over the years. And I'm really encouraging um, other women in business, especially to, to look at, you know, your, your, the way you're thinking, the way you're feeling, the way you're, you're behaving and uh and look at it in a different way because absolutely Joan as you say it's just like 
push, 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 and then there's never any real sense of satisfaction then. So, yeah. Yeah, so, so other things that I realized is, you know, I was doing different kinds of business in art and they would fail and then they'd fail and then they'd fail. And I, 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 and I'd look at the perspective, you know, after they failed and I was like, well, it always moved me to the next effort, you know, another, another type of business to try. But I realized, number one, I was pushing too hard. When mm -hmm. you're pushing too hard, you can't get to who you really are. What are your values? Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. stop and say, is, is the business and the art I'm doing right now relating to my values? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was about pushing too hard. I know I still hadn't quite gotten that down and I still hadn't quite gotten loving myself down. But, you know, in, this, in, the, in the effort to make money or mm -hmm. to make business work, mm -hmm. I started get, veering away from what really matters to me, my values. And right. so you have to stop, you know, when things fail, you know, that's the huge wake up call to stop and analyze what you're doing again and say, am I being true to what, what do you really want? Mm -hmm. What really matters in your life? What makes you feel good? Mm -hmm. Is that business you were doing, you know, is it, does it really make you feel good? Is it your, is it, does it reflect your values, your passions? Mm -hmm. And so when I stopped and looked at something, I was like, wow, I was doing that business just thinking I could sell. Or, you know, because things were starting, and I won't go into all those things, but, you know, mm -hmm. that general lesson of, you know, stop and, and study and look at your values. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I'm guessing um, many listeners, people watching this, they're, they're busy with day-to-day -day life. They've got like high, a lot of pressure at work to get things done. There are so many demands in the corporate world. There's maybe family um, demands to deal with as well. And I know a lot of women, especially who I work with, they want to do something different, be different in a way, but don't seem to have that time to, to reflect. What, what are your thoughts around that? You have to. <laughs> <laughs> you, if you don't, you're just gonna years are gonna go by and you're gonna go what did I do you're gonna live in that regret thing you know we were not allowed to regret you know so stop and say I'm not gonna regret I'm, I'm going I have to stop even if it's five minutes we can all stop for five minutes and just you know jot some notes down let your hand fluidly write or you know just just feel yourself for a moment you know if you're ten, just I and mean, we all have five ten fifteen minutes that we can stop you just have to yeah if, if your life is important to you if your happiness is important to you mm -hmm. you know you're not going to get anywhere your life will not get better if right. you don't stop and reflect i mean as far as um you know happiness and se a sense of feeling good about what you're doing because you know how many people spend 10 years at a career or 50 years at a career and just go wow i never did what i loved you know yeah yeah and then also it's the impact on the people around as well it's kind of, you know, it impacts the people at work and it oh. impacts family. Yeah. And, you know, talking about, can I insert this? <laughs> like, okay. I, a job. Like I, I decided to be an art teacher. I, I let not to go into the stories because I was full-time artist and then I decided to be a teacher so I could be free to do art that I wanted to do and not put the money around it. You know, like mm -hmm. as a teacher, I could do art every night, every weekend, all summer long, and I was free to do whatever, and, and, you know, I didn't care if it sold or not. And so I could really be free and creative and experiment and not be concerned. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I had it in my heart, I, I had the personality of a teacher. So, you know, I, so I, I, I love teaching in the beginning. And then all of a sudden, after a couple of years, I was like, the kids didn't really want to be there. That was my impression. You know, they didn't really want to be there. And so I was like, why am I here teaching when I have all this passion for what I'm doing and they don't want to be? Anyway, I didn't like my job. So <laughs> if you don't like your job, mm -hmm. I was driving to school and listening to self-help tapes, which I do every day, you know, like back then, especially every minute, self-help tapes, you know, and on the way to school, as I'm thinking, I'm going to have to quit this job. I can't take it. Um, I listened and it said, when you don't like what you're doing, you have a choice. Mm -hmm. quit, yeah, quit your job and mm -hmm. find a better one that makes you feel happier or better, or 
if it's, you know, you want, if you decide you want to stay, you can't just stay and be unhappy. You have to change your attitude and give it your all. Yeah. You have to give it your all because when you start not liking something, you back off and you start half-heartedly doing your job and then it multiplies then you hate it even more because it's not fulfilling in any way mm -hmm. so i stopped and i studied my values and my two top values were spirituality and creativity mm -hmm. i was like wait a minute i can ex i can I, I decided my teaching job was a good paying job and, and, a, and a beautiful district and really great kids and i just changed i said i'm going to stay in this job so i was like give it my all to to teach them as creatively as i can to just express you know to, to develop my own creativity through them you know mm -hmm. my creative teaching and my spirituality of learning how to love all human beings mm -hmm. <laughs> you know every child that's in that room you just love them for who they are no matter what happened to them and the, the fight in the hall or the horrible morning or the you know no food in the morning or you know whatever angry mood or whatever attitude they're from you just love them for where they are and and boy that exercise of practicing my spirituality with them and my creativity right. I, I developed a class called creativity which is about creating your life not art mm -hmm. I mean you know create your life because we can create our lives you know so I, I you know I, so I ended up loving my job because I got to teach this class and you know and I just anyway so you have a choice, give it your all and then your job feeds you, you know, and you grow and you're happy, you know, or quit your job. So like that, I, I learned a big, thing. but back to values, right? Yeah. 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 So I, I love this because I hear a lot of, or I increasingly hear of people who are realizing that they're not feeling, you know, completely fulfilled in their work. And they are now taking that step and going and finding a new position, which is something that, you know, some years ago, especially here in Japan, people would not do. People would stay with the, the job for a long time. And, you know, with women, it's like stay there until you get married or you have kids or, or you know, or whatever. But things are, are changing. And so we're seeing more and more, like, for example, women's in the Sasuke VIP coaching program are changing jobs or you know they're getting promotions and things like that and what you say is so I, I hear the success stories of people who go and find something new but what you're talking about is you're staying in the same actual job and then you're looking at it in a completely different way by asking yourself what your values are yeah so what about if people if people think oh well my my values are this and this and how does that how does that I can't, I can't bring those values together into a, in, into a job that makes sense. Um, well, yeah, you, it, well then maybe you don't, maybe you're really in the wrong job then, you know, if you really, mm. but you know, sometimes you have to push yourself, you know, it's like the first top three answers isn't always your solution. If you sit and force yourself to come up with more creative ways to make it work, that's if you feel like you really want to stay. <clears throat> you know, you've got reasons like, oh, you know, like you're making the excuses. I have to be miserable, miserable because I have to stay in this job. <laughs> you know? No, well, okay. If you decide you, you have to stay in this job, you have to not be miserable. You have to get out of your misery. So you have to change your vision towards that. And sometimes like you have to push seven or eight reasons down to the last reason, you know, put to, you know, the different ways of looking at your job. Mm, okay. Yeah, ways of looking. Come have you got any, because this is actually interesting, this is a question that did come up in the, the Sasaga VIP Women's Coaching Program, um, about how to see things from different perspectives, because um, we were doing an exercise about looking at different perspectives, and some of them were saying, okay, well, I've just got to, I can get as far as three different perspectives, but I can't see any, any further than that. Do you have any thoughts around that? I'm just throwing <laughs> at you. I you know off the top of my head that that sometimes takes a little time, you know, to push and and, okay. and, and and creative, you know, like now that I have experienced more creativity, I know that like with my students, like the first three responses are not always your strongest pushing and pushing. Sometimes it's that last one 
and you know, that ninth one or the seventh one and and pushing is not easy you know and you think right. three is all there is but you know that's like that's like saying life is what we see you know <laughs> <laughs> you know, life is so much more expansive and we have much more creativity naturally in our minds by the way we all have creativity all all of us do we just might have it blocked because of insecurity or yeah. or you know being told that we don't or just you know blocking it but we all have creativity so exercising i can't think of something off the top of my head right now like as an example but it takes time to push sometimes well, so i think that's 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 maybe the key is it's not a case of just giving up right then and there and yeah. what you said earlier on as well as sometimes if you're pushing then it doesn't come but it's maybe it's about giving time and just sort of yeah. leaving open to possibility and then you know, cuz like i mean for me certainly it's like go in the shower ideas <laughs> And, and so sometimes just from a change of environment, ideas can come as well, right? Yeah, just ask. I need more solutions. Help me. Yeah. You know, even yeah. if, it, if I find it out tomorrow, like you said later, you know, just, yeah, just ask. Ask and you shall receive, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Love it's it. True. It's true. Love it. Fantastic. So what else, what else do you want to share with the Sasaga podca podcast listeners and our, our viewers today? I don't, I just, with the student once, we were talking about values and, mm. and passions, you know, like what, and we did all this work to get to their top two things. And I'm not going to go through all that, but we did a lot of listing our passions and listing, listing our values and then listing the two top things. And this one student, her two top things was, um, I want to be a nurse. I just know I want to be a nurse. I want to be a caregiver. And mm. then I love history. I mm. love to study history and to talk about history and think about history. And she said, and I said, wow, those are two very different things, huh? She said, yeah. And I said, well, why don't we give that some thought? Relax. Let's think about that. Can we get creative with a job? So we sat and I said, what about if you were a caregiver that as you went into your patient, you gave them a little tidbit of history, like you shared some little history, you know, like something, because you want to talk to the patient, right? Mm -hmm. And then you've got this reputation as being, oh, that's that nurse who knows history stuff. And so some person who needed private care and loved history would hire you. You become a, a special, unique, you know, caretaker that has knowledge of history and they want you around because you can share this, these interesting, this interesting information along with caring. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, it's like, who would ever think those two things could be combined, right? Right, right. So if you think of, you know, if you get creative, yeah. you can create, you can create demand for your unique self and yeah. still your two pat and keep your two passions alive. I love that. And that gives me another idea as well for what we we're talking about earlier is if you don't have the idea that comes to you, to you, or you're not seeing as many perspectives, asking someone else, because in that case, that student asked you and you came up with the idea. So just talking about it can bring in more ideas as well. Wonderful. I love it. Oh, so great. So yeah, I, I, I just wanted to mention a little bit about the, um, the eye energy portrait. So this is just one of the types of, the many, many types of fabulous art that you do, isn't it? Oh, here, I've got a, I've got a lion. Look, it's, good. it's way too big. Way I too didn't big. even know that was at the site. So, okay, so everybody's listening. You have to see the video. Oh my goodness, I didn't even know that was there. So gorgeous. And look at the gold. Yeah. Oh, wow. 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 Um, what, I, what I want to do as well is, is post um, some of your, share some of your videos, Joan, because um, cool. just seeing those videos of you working mm. is just absolutely beautiful. It's like, it's mesmerizing. It's so, so beautiful. Um, and for me, you know, I, when I learned about the amazing work that, that you're doing, Joan, I was like, oh yeah, I absolutely need my own eye energy portrait. And, and you created this, this absolute masterpiece for me, which, which now, it, I, what I love about it is that it's, you know, it's, I can move it around and I can, I can sit it, you know, if I'm, if I'm working in a different place, I can actually sit it there and, and get the inspiration from it. So it's just absolutely wonderful. And we'll also share the video of when you, when you gave that to me and I, and I opened it up and yes. <laughs> Oh, it was just so emotional to be to to open that up. Yeah. 
And the piece of the piece of art that for those of you who are watching the, the video that you can see above the eye energy portrait, that's actually just your practice piece, right? <laughs> yeah, experimenting <laughs> to, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Years. I did that several times, you know, yeah. So, so wonderful. Um, and you mentioned as well about just the power of having things around you to, to inspire you. Yeah, so when that, now I am totally so high about what I'm doing because I am using my values. I'm expressing my spirituality through my art and the powerful Michelangelo's spiritual, spirituality that, that I was told at 19 that I need to do and that I got waylaid, you know, between insecurity and trying other directions and all these things. But now I've come back to the powerful spiritual messages because... I now I'm sharing, you know, what do you love? What are your passions? What turns you on? And then I, I help people in, you know, remember because we need to have, even if it's a pretty color pillow or a picture that reminds you of something, anything that inspires you, you know, mm -hmm. color, objects, symbols, things that inspire you helps you remember who you are and what matters and what lights you up. It's very important to have these things around you. Oh, I love it. That is such a great place to close the interview today. Yeah, have things around you that light you up and remind you of who you are. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Joan, for being our fabulous guest on the Sasaga podcast. It's been wonderful. It's been totally inspiring. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing what everybody thinks about this as well. Thank you so much. I love you, Helen. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you. <laughs> My <figure. laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.